four years, maybe five years ago, someone who follows the brand reached out to me. They were here in LA, I think it's technically in East LA, just uh, east of downtown, and said, oh, I've got an old Bronco, I, I love your brand, I think you'd be interested in buying it, so I went down to check it out, and it was such a cool experience, like, the guy was lovely, the truck was amazing, original paint, original interior, black plates, like time capsule old. Now not pristine, um, but incredible integrity and tons of charm. And uh, we struck a deal and I said, alright, bought it. And then by the time I got home, he reached out and he said, well, you know, the truck belonged to my grandfather passed away recently and uh, when I was showing you the truck my grandmother was inside and she heard me doing so and although she was experiencing I believe it was late stage dementia or Alzheimer's um, she had uh, enough presence of mind to tell him the second he walked back into the house you're not selling my truck so he kindly, I believe the grandfather had willed it to him, but he kindly honored her wishes and called me and canceled the deal. And I was super bummed out, but I really liked the guy. And I said, I totally understand. Uh, family's important. So just keep me in mind. You ever decide to sell it, you let me know. So sure enough, I think about two years or so passed. And he reached out one day and he said, well, Unfortunately, my grandma passed away, but the truck was willed to me. If you're still interested, I'm still wanting to sell it. I said, yes, I am. You know, actually, the market has changed a bit. The truck's gone up in value. So I gave him a stronger offer on the truck, which may have not been necessary, but it seemed like the right thing to do. And he sold me the truck. Immediately, it went into the Ford derelict only personal hoard because not only was the patina and all the conditions and everything just right but the story was just so cool so the truck originally I believe it's maybe 80 90 percent of its use was just for this older gentleman's hobby but I guess he wasn't old in the beginning so the truck is in 1967 and grandpa's hobby was going out and playing in the desert and mostly prospecting. So when I got the truck, he showed me a picture and gave me a picture actually of his grandpa out in the desert wearing his cowboy hat, his cowboy boots, he's wearing his prospecting clothes and he's got prospecting tools in his hand. It took about a year, but then we actually I begged him, please, man, I know you're cleaning out the house and going through everything. If you find those tools, they really should stay with the truck. This is just, again, it's part of the lore, part of the history of this specific truck's past. So he did, he found the tools. So we made sure to keep the tools with the truck. So I built a little leather pouch using scraps from the interior build out. And uh, I'll show them to you back in the cargo area. The truck originally came with bench seats. The spare tire was mounted in the rear area. It had a fixed bulkhead and no rear seat. Now we deleted the fixed bulkhead. We deleted the interior spare. We converted to front bucket seats. And we added our removable tuck and tumble rear bench. Uh, the paint on the truck is all original body was remarkably good. We didn't even buff it. We left all the chalky desert sunburnt patina on it. It's just, again, it's kind of part, part of the vibe. Um, the wheels, of course, are faux patina, which I hate that word, but it's the only honest word in this case. So those are the forged icon old school aluminum 18 inch wheels which then allow us to fit the big old Brembo brakes. For the leather on this truck, you know, the doors, again, the guy was like a tinkerer, you know? So he had done a bunch of little mods to the truck. So there's like a jerry can, jury rigged, brackety situation, 
kind of scab welded onto the tailgate. Part of the story, so we left it. The doors have been altered with, my best guess is maybe it's Fairlane or early Mustang, armrest and map pocket, which is a total homemade hodgepodge. We left it. We left the original low trim, no options pretty much, uh, steel door panels um, with the original paint on them. But for the seats, we did upgrade to our more comfortable buckets and we upholstered them in a really nice leather from our friends at Relicate. So it's a smooth grain on the outer bolsters and back panels, but the center inserts have the, what they call the matchstick pattern, um, which is very similar to the original embossed pattern on the original vinyl that was on the bench seat. Obviously we added our roll cage with three point belts for everybody. And the dash is all new construction, patina painted to look vintage. We do it in a very stock style, but we alter the lower angle. It's kicked out a little bit so that we can make room for the vintage air gen 4 unit and the in dash AC system. Also, you know my big love for plastic. So the column clamp, the two piece black piece that holds the column onto the dash, that's machined and then powder coated and finish so it kind of still looks like the original plastic one but should you ever touch it it's like you're in a nice hardware store you're not a Toys R Us. Gauges are the usual old school icon gauges uh, and then dash knobs and switches of course you got lights, wiper, fan, vent, tent. For the roof on this one we kept the old school cardboard just the Alcantara seemed a bit fancy pants for the style and vibe of this derelict and it's more original. For the audio system we went ahead and did our usual Icon Center console where you have the sub compartment hiding Pioneer NEX head unit which provides everything you're going to need and more. Um, painted bumpers all stock. The rear tire carrier is not featured on this build at the client's request. We are featuring the new Gen 3 Coyote 5 liter aluminum fuel injected V8 is found in the current Mustang GT. And that is sending power through to the Ford AOD automatic with overdrive. And then the power is received by the Atlas 2 twin stick shift on the fly part time four wheel drive two speed transfer case. Buddies at Curry, their Dana Architecture 44 based front, Dana 60 based rear, high pinion format, Brembo Icon Sport Brakes Hydro Boosted, and uh, ARB locking differentials with dedicated air compressor. And uh, yeah, I think that about sums it up. I love these derelict builds. So happy they've kind of taken off. I'm not happy how difficult they are to find. If you or even perhaps your neighbor has what appears to be a early Bronco that is prime for such antics, please let me know. I'm happy to pay finders and fees. We're always, always, always on the hunt. And uh, yeah, reach out. Website icon4x4.com, Instagram and Facebook, also icon4x4. The old school telephone is 818 280 3333. And that's all I got for you.